Rolling. JV, you grew up in a hunting environment. How has hunting changed? Well, in my day, we would go out and walk and trek for hours, and uh, probably in every 30 hunts, we might be able to shoot a lion or a leopard. So that was hunting in the true sense of the word. No vehicles allowed, no spotlights, um, no telescopic sights, nothing like that. Today, hunting is all about money. Um, a wealthy hunter from either the United States or Europe will book a hunt. And the first thing he'll do is he'll say to the professional hunter, that's the operator, he'll say, all right, it costs $40,000 for a lion. If you can get me that big lion, and he's probably seen a picture of that lion from a photographic safari that's inside a national park. You get me that big lion, I'll give you an extra $15,000. Because you've got to remember, in the United States alone, there are 55,000 registered hunters. Now, all those hunters are sitting in clubs, and they're all competing with, uh, with each other. It's like a sport, like any sport. They're all trying to win the cup at the end of the season for the biggest. Um, so once that trophy is, is killed, the first thing they do is measure it. They measure the horns. They measure the, from the tip to the tail. They measure the tusks. And that's what scores them points. So your problem is that your hunter, who claim to be such great conservationists, they're always looking for the biggest animal. And more often than not, the biggest animal is your best breeding animal. So in the case of this lion Cecil and Wanky, where all the furora is about, this was a dominant male who was part of a research project. Okay? Now that hunter would have researched through the professional hunter, does that territory of that male lion come anywhere near your hunting concession area? If it comes near the hunting concession area, then they know they have a shot at getting that line. Now, how are they going to get that line out of the national park? They're going to use a number of things. Firstly, they're going to pull a bait along the boundary. In my time, it was totally unethical. The second thing they do is they can play a recording. They can play a recording of a distress call of a buffalo. That will bring a, bring a big male line because he knows it's maybe a, a free meal. And the third thing they can do is play the recording of another male line. So now he thinks his territory is being invaded by a big male lion, he'll go there to investigate. As soon as he steps across the boundary, they shoot him. And the problem is that in a 21-day safari, where a wealthy hunter is taking an elephant, a leopard, a lion, and a buffalo, okay, these professional hunters are under enormous pressure to produce four of the big five in just 21 days. So... There's pressure, but there's also rich rewards at the end of the hunt because they're paying in dollars. For a guy that lives in Zimbabwe where there's no currency, the currency's completely shot, he's trying to earn a living. The lure of this big dollar and the ability to earn money quickly from this hunter, he has to maximize. So his ethics fly completely out of the window. He'll do anything he can to get that big elephant, to get that big buffalo bull to get that dominant male line. And that's where hunting basically has just turned rotten. You say hunting is unethical. What do you mean by that? How is it unethical? Well, as I've explained, um, it's all about money. And the professional hunter is using totally unethical means um, to get these trophies. The old way of hunting was fair chase. The animal had a chance to get away. When we hunted, every, I would say one hunt was successful out of 30. Today, this professional hunter has to produce uh, a big trophy and maybe four big trophies in 21 days. Massive amounts of money, massive pressure, and so the ethics just fly out of the window. Does the fault lie with the hunter or does it lie with the professional hunters guiding them? The fault lies with the hunter and the professional hunter. Because what these hunters do, they will watch and they will see a, a picture of a large male lion taken on an 
on a photographic safari. The first thing they'll do is, where is that lion? Okay? They'll then investigate, does that lion territory perhaps move anywhere close to a hunting concession area? If it does, the first thing they'll do is they'll contact the professional hunter who owns that concession. So in this case with Cecil, he was a dominant male. His territory was in Wanky Game Reserve, but the territory went close to the boundary of the concession area. Now, what do they do? They have to get that dominant male lion out of the national park into the concession area where they can shoot him. And that's where the ethics come in. Baiting, recordings, all sorts of tricks to lure that line across the boundary. What's going to happen now that Cecil's gone? Well, the situation is, is very well known. Lions control territories with coalitions. So you've got one or two or three, sometimes in the case of Serengeti and Lon Losey, you can have five male lions standing in a coalition. Now, once that coalition is broken up, by all accounts, this coalition is just two dominant males. Now one is taken out. The single male lion that's left, he doesn't have the strength or the numbers to protect the cubs and the pride. So a coalition coming in, young male lions, three, four, the first thing they'll do is they raid in there, they'll chase that male away, or they'll kill him if they can get him. Okay? Chase him away, kill him, and now all those cubs are exposed to the new coalition. Now they don't want those lionesses hanging around for 20, 20, 30 months while those lions are dispersing. If they kill those cubs, then those females will come into estrus immediately. Then they can inject their genes into the system. And that's a very powerful force, injection of genes into the system. So you shoot the dominant male, then cubs get killed by the new males coming in. Those new males then cover the females and inject their genes into the system and so it continues. So what that wealthy hunter that's paid all that money, what he doesn't consider, or what he doesn't care, is that he has a large trophy hanging on his wall, but the damage that he's uh, exerted down the line is not just one line. It could be five, six, depending how many cubs are in that litter. Okay, cut that. Cecil was the king of Wanky, roamed there for many long years. Biggest of all with the beautiful mane, he's killed by American man. He's killed by American man. An ignorant man, egotistical man, killed by American man. 
thought he could trust us forever To shoot pictures with cameras in hand He thought that we loved and admired him He thought he was part of our plan He was part of our plan He was part of the plan The research plan The conservation plan What What price does beauty pay? Do the hunters know that in the end Karma is waiting, my friend Karma is waiting, my friend She's a bitch, she's a bitch Karma's a bitch, she's a bitch, she's a bitch She's waiting for you, my friend She's waiting for you, my friend Cecil picks up the scent of the bait It's dragged along the boundary that day Blinded by the light of the powerful spotlight A crossbow shoots an arrow with pain An arrow with pain An arrow with pain An arrow brings pain Terrible pain Terrible pain Forty hours he runs away from the men and their guns running on empty limping and lay bullet puts the end to his pain puts an end to the pain an end to the pain who will look after Cecil's cubs Jerry Cup can't manage alone Who will protect his pride? Man and more lions could die That in the end Karma is waiting, my friend Karma is waiting, my friend She's a bitch, she's a bitch Karma's she's a, bitch. a bitch She's a bitch, she's a bitch She's waiting for you, my friend